the ATP Tour resumes play, it will be in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., for the City Open. Last year, Jessie Pagula won her first WTA singles title in D.C., beating Camilla Georgi 6-2, 6-2 in the final. It pushed Pagula to a career-high 55 in the world. On the men's side, Nick Kyrgios had a spectacular week, taking out back-to-back -to -back top 10 players in the last two rounds. He beat Daniil Medvedev in the final for his sixth career title, even asking a fan where to serve on match point. It was such an entertaining tournament. And we are so pleased now to be joined by the CEO and president of the City Open, Mark Ein. And uh, Mark, obviously a lot has changed in the past year. The dates of the City Open have moved. You are now uh, the first tournament when the ATP Tour resumes. I do want to get your reaction uh, to what you saw with the Adria Tour and, and what you heard when Grigor Dimitrov, Borna Chorich, Viktor Troitsky all came out testing positive for COVID-19. Yeah, well, first, thanks for uh, having me and showing those clips of last year brings back a lot of fantastic memories. And, uh, you know, Grigor is a wonderful guy. Uh, so most importantly, we hope he's healthy as well as the other players. Um, obviously, that's not ideal uh, coming off the announcement about our event. But I think people pretty widely understand that uh, not just the regular precautions weren't taken, but it was pretty clear they didn't take precautions there. Um, and that what the country allowed them to do is extremely different from what we do here and in D.C. In fact, D.C. was just named uh, the city with the lowest spread in the nation or the state um, yesterday. The mayor has been extremely cautious. And as a result, um, it's actually become quite a safe place to be. But also as a result, we're working closely with them, our medical provider, MedStar. We're going to take best in class, world class precautions and people will see something very different than what they saw over there. Mark, we were talking about how this is the first event back on the men's side. What kind of fields are you expecting? We already are seeing it, John. Um, we've been inundated since we announced the event, people wanting to come. We actually can't announce it, but we had a top five player confirmed today. Uh, the list is growing and, uh, you know, look, if you're going to play the U.S. Open and you're going to play Western Southern before, whether you're in the United States or you're coming over, it just makes sense to come to Washington. We have three international airports here. You People haven't played for six months. Uh, they haven't made money. They haven't had ranking points. They haven't competed, which is really what they love. Um, it, it's a three and a half hour drive to, to New York. So, uh, you know, we think virtually everyone who's doing that should do this. Um, you know, <laughs> I had a player in the mid 50s call me last week saying reserve a wild card. I think our cut was in the 70s, usually saying I'm not sure I'm going to get in. So I think that's indicative of the kind of interest that uh, that we're going to have. We think it's going to be an absolutely incredible field. A lot of events are obviously going to look to this uh, for, for some guidance. Give us a sense of what the players are going to expect in terms of testing and general health and welfare. Yeah, I mean, the same principles that we're applying in our communities and our restaurants are the same ones that we would apply here. Plus testing is, you know, social distancing, wearing masks, contact tracing. And then here you're creating a bubble and you're testing. So everyone, when they arrive, gets tested um, and they have to stay in the hotel until we get the results, which uh, we hope is same day. Um, and then you're in the hotel bubble and you get back and forth to the site um, by our transportation and the site is a bubble. At the moment, we're playing, assuming no fans. Um, and then every day we'll have temperature checks, questionnaires, and then probably we'll augment it with additional testing through the week. So a lot of it is a lot of it is the same things everyone's talking about, plus an extra layer of testing. And we think if you do that, you keep a bubble um, that people can will be safe. You mentioned no fans. We we noticed that when we showed the WTA's return schedule, Washington, D.C. wasn't there. What is the status of uh, having women in the draw this year? Well, John, you know, I'm deeply committed. I've been deeply committed for now almost 15 years to both men's and women's tennis through my involvement in world team tennis. And uh, we definitely want to showcase women at the event. Uh, we've been in constant uh, work dialogue with the WTA and Octagon, who actually owns the sanction about trying to figure out a way that we can do that as well. And uh, and uh, and we're really hopeful that um, we're going to be able to do that and for sure committed to having women in D.C. this summer. 
Uh, it's fantastic news. Talking to the president, CEO of the City Open, Mark Ein. City Open set to be the first tournament back on the ATP Tour, as Mark just told us. Uh, hopefully have a WTA event there as well. Uh, Mark, take us through the process of how this happened and, and how the City Open got to be back on the calendar, because usually it's that last week in July. Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, uh, Canada uh, dropped off. Um, obviously, they have their own governmental approval process, plus just going in and out of another foreign country was prohibitive. Um, and so it just made sense to do this in a contiguous fashion, uh, which is why we're, we're moving back. But you say, how did this happen? I mean, it's been months of work since the lockdown started. We started planning and, and thinking about how we could do this, and, and frankly, you know, the measure at the end of every day, it was always we're taking two steps forward. The question is, were we taking one step back or four steps back? And on a good day, we only would take one step back and move forward. And fortunately, at the end, really due to the incredible collaboration with so many people, um, the ATP, the USTA, our city, the Park Service, MedStar, our healthcare provider, our city, our sponsor, um, we were able to make this happen. If any one of them would not have uh, frankly, compromised, uh, it just wouldn't have been possible. But everyone gave up a little so that we could create something. And we're really grateful. And that's how it all happened. All right, well, we here at Tennis Channel proud to be partners with you, Mark, and the City Open. Looking forward uh, to calling all of those matches right here on Tennis Channel. John, thanks for joining us on TC Live as well. And Mark, uh, stay safe and, and looking forward to what you say will be an amazing field, maybe the best field ever at the City Open. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, uh, we're looking forward to seeing all of our friends at Tennis Channel there for first ball to last ball coverage.